Hi, I'm Mitch from Haltech and welcome to the next installment on Mark Arblaster's project Paw 440. In the last episode, Mark's Valiant got wired up with a full engine harness and had a basic Haltech system installed. After a full mechanical and electrical once-over, the car started up first go, much to everyone's delight. A few weeks later, the car turned up at the Haltech headquarters in Sydney. The plan was to fine-tune the car and prepare it for racing. Well, that was the plan anyway. Unfortunately, as it's the case with most builds, things don't go to plan. So the first problem we came across was during some high boost dyno runs where at the end of the runs we found that the coolant overflow tank was just filling up with way too much coolant. Fitting a brand new pair of LS9 head gaskets fixed that problem. But immediately, another issue appeared on the radar. This time, it was the brake system. So it's all well and good to have heaps of horsepower, but when it comes to stopping this thing at probably 150 miles an hour, brakes are very important. Basically, we found an issue in the custom brake setup on this car with a leaking seal, and that caused the brakes to just not work effectively. Luckily, the faulty component was a common Holden part and was easily sourced from a local wrecker. With the cooling and brake system back under control, the guys were eager to take the car to the racetrack for a couple of shakedown runs. The first shakedown run revealed a few problems, preventing the car from running smoothly and quickly. The first problem was with boost. Our boost control was just not working properly. During the first test pass, we noticed that the boost was just not where it was programmed to be. We opened the wastegates and the springs weren't matching. And that's no good. The second problem was with the launch. The car was creeping on the trans brake. The trans brake is meant to hold the car stationary on the start line while the engine builds power. However, an issue in the transmission caused the car to creep forward. Unfortunately, the trans brake issue just wasn't an easier fix. To resolve the trans brake problem, we had to take the car to an automatic transmission uh, service centre. They did some pressure tests on the transmission and found that there was a fault in the valve body. We had to purchase a new valve body and have that uh, swapped into the transmission. While the testing highlighted a number of issues that needed to be addressed, the guys came home with some valuable data. Um, so it felt like we finally got some boost. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think we found the sweet spot with the boost control. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's reacting really well on the trans brake and it holds a nice solid 16 pounds that last pass. Another problem that became obvious at the racetrack was that the gearing in the car was too short with Mark being on the rev limiter way before the finish line. The solution for that was installing a set of taller gears. So the old 3.5 gears maxed out at about 140 mile an hour. The new 3.2s should let us go a lot faster than that. And faster is better. With all the problems sorted, it was time to put the car on the dyno for some fine tuning. Alright, so this is a really good power figure for the boost that we're running. The boost control is nice and stable through the whole run and the air fuel ratio is nice and safe. It's been an eventful week, many late nights and lots of hard work went into getting the car ready. The team managed to overcome all obstacles in their way 
and work through all the issues. Drag challenge starts in a few days and I'm confident this beast is ready to go. In the next episode, we follow Mitch and Luke as they face their biggest challenge yet, a 1500 kilometer endurance test known as the Street Machine Drag Challenge.